well, let's just get started here. Sorry for my voice. I know I had to cancel health coach answers yesterday because I was a little sick. It's a little better today, so we're just going to wing this. So uh, welcome to Recipe Redo. Um, today we're going to take a really famous recipe, pizza. Everybody loves pizza. And we're going to make it a little bit more mighty friendly. So we've got Mary here. I know she's a friendly face for some of you. Um, mm -hmm. And she's going to be doing the recipe. I'm going to be kind of walking through the nutrition specifics and um, we'll hopefully make this a fun event for you guys. So um, of course, you can stay muted during the event, but if you have questions, we'll um, have a short break while it's cooking to take some questions. So pop them in the chat as always, but then you can always come off, come off mute if you need to as well. So um, I will just kind of let Mary get started here and take it away. Thanks, Lindsay. Welcome to Recipe Redo. And it's a great one because we're going to make pizza, but make it in a healthier way. So we're gonna make a crust, we're gonna make a sauce, we're gonna add some delicious toppings, and it, it actually comes together pretty quick. So let's get started by let me, letting me show you the ingredients for the crust. That's the first part we're gonna make, very important part. And there's just a few ingredients. You're gonna love how simple this recipe is. So the main, uh, the star of the show here is some blanched almond flour. We have two cups, and then we've got one, 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 and one of all the rest of the things. If you can count to one, you can do this recipe. So we have some garlic powder, some baking soda, and some salt. One teaspoon of each of these. One egg. Are you sensing a pattern here? And I have a little bit of water in case my dough is too crumbly. I've tried this a few times and I'm getting better at it each time. So let me uh, give it another whirl and um, we'll, show what this looks like when it comes together in this medium-sized bowl. I have a couple pieces of parchment paper ready to go, so let's get started. I'm going to take my two cups of almond flour, put it into my bowl, and sometimes almond flour can be a little crumbly or some little lumps in it. I like to take a fork and kind of get rid of those lumps. There, it's looking good. These will go away a little bit more, but um, either way, it's gonna be delicious. So here come my seasonings for the pizza dough, the garlic powder, it's garlic powder, not garlic salt, and then baking soda. This is what's gonna get it to uh, give it some rise, get it to thicken up a little bit, and then that one teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna mix th these together with my almond flour. Now you'll find at the store, they have a whole almond flour and then they have blanched. This is using the blanched. It makes a lighter crust uh, colored dough, which is what we want. And for those of you that don't really know what blanched means, it literally just means boiling the almonds to remove the skin. So it's the almonds ground up without the skin or you can get the flour that's just pure almonds with the skin as well. Right, thanks Lones. Okay, so it's hard to believe, but this one little egg is gonna uh, provide the liquid that we need for this whole pizza dough. So I'm gonna crack my egg into the bowl, a separate little bowl. And from there, I'm gonna beat it just a little bit. And then in it goes. So I found that a, a, just a rubber spatula is great to start to combine this. And you're just letting the almond flour and all the spices soak up the egg. You wanna, it's gonna, it, it looks like it's not gonna turn into dough, but trust me, have a little faith. While Mary is kind of mixing up the dough, because like she said, it takes a little bit of time. You have to have some faith and some gentleness with it. Um, <laughs> I just want to talk about kind of why we chose almond flour. Um, you can do this recipe with coconut flour, with some rice flours even, but almond flour really just kind of proves to be one of the healthier flours on the market. Um, to kind of compare it to like 
all-purpose flour. It's way higher in fiber, way higher in protein. I'll talk about the specific like numbers later on, but way higher in fiber, way higher in protein, and way lower in carbs than all-purpose flour. So um, it's just a better alternative for if you're going for a lower carb diet or just looking for something that's um, a little bit more nutrient dense than your all-purpose flour. When I was reading this, I couldn't believe how much protein it had. It is mm -hmm. it's fabulous. Yeah, so two cups of almond flour actually has 47 grams of protein, which is like insane. Of course, you're not ideally not going to eat this entire pizza. You're probably <laughs> just have like half or a couple well, slices. That's yeah, that, that's very true. Hey, even then, 47 <laughs> grams of protein, that's, you know, a good chunk of your protein yeah. for the day. So. <laughs> Okay, so it's starting to moisten up as you can see. Don't be afraid to just get in there with your hands at this point. And that's because that's going to really help it to bind together with your nice clean hands and kind of knead it into a dough ball. And see, I'm kind of uh, pressing up all the little bits of flour because we're going to want all of that in our dough. So. A little bit of patience and here we are. The one thing I did add after making this once is a little bit of water because I found that a normal pizza dough is kind of just a, has a little more moisture to it and I found by adding one or two teaspoons of just plain water it gave a better consistency to my pizza dough. So I'm going to add that in right now and mix it up. For those of you that didn't see already, I also posted the recipe link in the chat, so feel free to copy and paste that um, if you want to attempt this. Okay, I think we're ready to roll it. This is the fun part. I have a couple pieces of parchment paper right beneath my bowl. I make it super fun because it let me get it slide all around. <laughs> but makes it handy too. So what I like to do is after I have it in a disc, flatten that just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my second piece of parchment paper on top. And then I'm gonna add my rolling pin and start rolling it out. So sometimes I like to stabilize it. Let's see, how's my shot there? <laughs> So I know with what, uh, the pizza uh, pan that I'm using, I think it says to use maybe a, um, like a stainless steel, like a cookie sheet type of pan, and that's great. Um, I found using a cast iron pan works great too with this recipe because it doesn't make a giant pizza, it makes just about the size of a cast iron pan. And then roll it. It says to roll it to about a quarter inch. I think if you could keep it a little thicker than that, it makes it more pizza-like. So with that in mind, we can do that. And what I found is the little bits that start seeping out the sides, you can kind of break off and put back. There's my little secret to get around crust. Don't tell anyone. Okay, this is looking great. And then I'm just gonna grab my cast iron skillet and I'm gonna lay it in. So here's my cast iron. I'm gonna peel one part of the dough off or one part of the parchment off and then I'm gonna use the other piece to lay it in ever so gently. and then press it into the sides. <laughs> and then we'll pop it in the oven. <laughs> it does fall apart a little bit, but don't worry, it still tastes the same. <laughs> food, fa <laughs> food, food falls apart, but we still love it, right? <laughs> You'll be glad to know. I'm gonna set a ta uh, eight minute timer to let that par bake and while that's baking, we're gonna get started on the sauce. For my sauce, let me show you those ingredients. We've got some uh, rough cut onion and garlic. 
We've got some diced tomatoes and we've got some roasted red peppers. You could also use a fresh pepper. Um, tastes just as great. This roasted though adds a little bit of nice flavor to this. So what you're gonna do is take your rough cut onion and garlic, put that into your saute pan. And by browning these in a little bit of olive oil, it's gonna really add some good flavor. It kind of gives it a little caramelized flavor to it. So I'm gonna put that just on my, on a low to medium setting, let it get sauteed up, give it a little stir with a wooden spoon or with your hand, and you're gonna have some um, beautiful caramelized veggies to throw in and to give your sauce a lot of flavor. So fortunately, I was able to caramelize those a little bit earlier. So we're gonna take those and put them in our blender to blend the sauce. So first we take the caramelized onion and garlic. That goes in. To that we're gonna add about two to three of these roasted red peppers. They're delicious. If you haven't bought them, I love to put these on sandwiches, in salads, and I think they're pretty, well, this big one is gonna go a long way. They're pretty healthy. Lindsay probably could attest to that. Yes. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about this sauce is it's all natural ingredients. And like Mary said, kind of caramelizing and roasting those onions and garlic really kind of gives it that sweetness that normally the sugar would give the sauce. So as you notice, there's no sugar in this sauce for a reason. Yes, which, uh, gosh, I don't know if you can find a sugar uh, sauce without sugar out there. It's just so hard to find these days. So I just am putting in some petite diced tomatoes. That's my last ingredient for the sauce. And I'm gonna give it a little pulse and a little blend. Um, if you like a chunkier sauce on your pizza, you can keep it more pulsed. If you like a smoother, more uh, ground up sauce, you can do that too. So I'm gonna just turn on my power, start a little pulsing. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so. Because I have that onion and it's rough chopped and the garlic, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give mine a good little blend there. With this recipe, you can just take your sauce and use it just as is, or you can put this in a skillet and saute it for a little bit if you want it to, uh, to kind of cook down a little bit. It might make it a little bit thicker. But I made a, a dough a little bit earlier and um, this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. So see, even if it's broken up, it's gonna turn out perfectly. It looks so good, Mary. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I got a little bit of, I got a little uh, zealous over my sauce here. But I'm gonna take that and we're ready to top it. I've had this pizza crust in the oven for about eight minutes, so it's par-baked. That means it's just partially baked. I like a saucy pizza, so I'm gonna put all that on it and I'm gonna spread it around. Turn this off so we don't have any, any issues. You can just use the back of a spoon. And there's our sauce. I'm Italian, so I get really saucy with the pizza, I guess you can tell. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add some great toppings now. I have, of course, some mozzarella. Lindsay, you might know, I know there's whole milk, uh, partially, or skim milk mozzarella. What do you suggest on that? Well, at Mighty, we always recommend like the full fat, so whole milk mozzarella is best just because more nutrients, um, less, you know, it, it, it's more satiating and we're looking at what's gonna take the yeah. less amount of food to fill us up, right? But you can always and use- And better. Exactly, yeah. And you can always use um, goat, and goat cheese and feta cheese are also awesome. And then if you're looking for an extra kick of protein, uh, it sounds funny, but cottage cheese and then ricotta are really good ways to add oh, wow. protein through your cheese. So there's a bunch of different cheeses you can experiment with here. That's great. Okay, so um, of course the mozzarella, I like to start with that first, sprinkle it on. This is looking good. And then some great veggies. I'll show you what we have. I've got some fresh spinach. I've got some bell pepper. 
and also some black olives. So these are all great toppings. I don't know if um, Lindsay has any input on that. I'm sure she does because she has such great input. Yeah, more veggies, the better. Like, you know, um, as you can see with Mary throwing the spinach and um, olives are technically considered a fat because they are, are higher in fat. But honestly, um, you know, any veggie, any pizza that you can do really veggie heavy is the best. Yeah. Well, I'll go sparingly on the olives, just in, in your honor there, Lindsay. But I also have some pepperoni, but this isn't your uh, regular t pepperoni. It's uncured and it's turkey pepperoni. Yep. And um, uncured pepperoni or whatever meats that you choose um, are always best. Those sodium nitrates that are in cured meats are just not great for us. Um, and so if you can find an uncured turkey pepperoni is going to be a little bit leaner than uh, just traditional pork pepperoni. Um, and then other meat toppings, uh, you can use ground beef, chicken, um, even like bacon crumbles if you want to. So there's a bunch of different things you can do here. Turkey sausage, does that make, make the cut? Yeah, yep, as long as it's uncured, of course, which you can find links that. Okay, don't great. Have that. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of spinach, because this is only gonna cook for about five minutes, so you don't have to be too worried. The other thing you could do is add your spinach after if you don't want it to get um, to brown at all. And going sparingly on the olives. So I have a little veggie, pepperoni veggie pizza here all ready to go in the oven. It's gonna bake for about five minutes, so let's go ahead and put it in. Grab my oven mitts, and I think our, our, our poor pizza dough from earlier might be ready to come out. Oh yeah. So, that one baked right up, and in goes the pizza for five minutes. Get ready. And to kind of go off of why it's good to bake the dough first before you put the sauce on it, it's just to crisp it up because the almond you know, flour is gonna make the dough a little bit less crispy. So if you can throw it in the oven like Mary did for you know five or eight minutes before putting the sauce on and then finish cooking, it's gonna give you that nice crisp around the edges as well. Right, and then nothing will absorb, it keeps the moisture from absorbing into that dough, doesn't it? So you don't get your soggy pizza. Yeah, awesome. Well, while we wait for that to kind of cook up, um, I mentioned kind of before as I was comparing flowers um, that I was gonna talk a little bit more about specific numbers um, and getting into the reason why almond flour is a little bit better than the all-purpose. Um, and it really just comes down to almond flour and coconut flours are a lot less processed than your traditional all-purpose flour. So the, in the, the process of turning flour into flour, you're removing the bran and the germ. Um, so you're removing a lot of the nutrients and then you're also, ble they bleach the flour. So that just in itself does not sound great, right? Um, and no. so <laughs> we want to make sure we're trying to, you know, and with almond flour, it's literally just blanched if you get blanched and then it's ground up. So no processing involved in it. Um, with all-purpose flour for two cups, it's 910 calories versus two cups of almond flour, which is 1,200. So wow. there are more calories in the almond flour, but like I said, you know, it is higher in fat, higher in protein. You're ideally going to eat less of it. Plus, it's way more nutrient dense. So even if you are eating the entire 1,200 um, calories, those calories are better quality calories than your 910. So, mm -hmm. yes, great info. Yeah, does, I love it. does anybody have any questions about the process so far, the nutrition of it? Lindsay, if hi. you ground your mm -hmm. own flour, hi, if you ground your own flour, does that change that? Um, I mean, it doesn't, It mm, that's a good question. I guess I don't know if it changes the like nutrition facts of it, but you can make your own almond flour at home. Just like, I don't know if, if anybody of you uh, have ever made your own almond milk, but it's actually really easy. Um, same with almond flour. You literally just blanch it, boil the skin off, and then ground it up in a food processor and there's your almond flour. So this is something you definitely can make at home too. What we have friends that buy like whole wheat mm -hmm. and then they grind their own flour Interesting. Oh, wow. so then it's not bleached and yeah. I, he got he got into this in covid and yeah. he he bought the grinder he swears by it yeah that would and, be just fine and then then you you skip all that processing and bleaching yep there's no bleach yeah yeah exactly so, that, so would that that would then like 
make the quality of the nutrition better. Yep, exactly, because you're not removing anything. You're literally just grounding it up into flour. So there's no processing involved. There's no, um, yeah, nutritional changes involved, really. And um, that kind of goes along, too. I'm glad you brought that up, Anne, is like there's also like whole wheat flours and stuff like that out there. So you're obviously wanting to look for the best option possible that go along with your goals. So if your goals aren't necessarily low carb or keto, you just want a healthier option, go with 100 whole, you know, 100% whole wheat flours. Um, you can mm -hmm. still do those, just making sure you're shopping for the best option. Yeah, that's okay. a great question. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I didn't know you could buy just whole wheat and then ground it up yourself. I learned something new every that's day. Amazing. <laughs> he, it was his COVID project. Hey, yeah. we all have to have a COVID project, right? Yeah. He, he should have grown the wheat too. I mean, <laughs> he did everything else. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I wanted to chat a little bit about the sauce too. So I posted the recipe. Um, we did modify the recipe just a little bit, but for, mo for the most part, it's the same. Um, and if you don't have time to make your own sauce or you don't want to, there are a couple brands that are great. Uh, Rouse, so I'll type them in the chat here. Um, and then it's called Yo Mama's sauce and they are sugar free. Uh -huh. So, um, and oh, then Prego actually makes a sugar free sauce as well. So there's options. You just have to make sure you're shopping for them. But um, yeah, that's an option for sauce as well. So there's, there's no added sugar. The recipe we posted online has red peppers and no tomato, right? And that's what the natural sugars in the tomatoes maybe give it? Yep, exactly. That yeah, and that's yeah. fine. I mean, if you're really looking to cut down your sugars, you would obviously remove the tomatoes, but added sugar is what we're really worried about. So right. as long as you can find a brand out there that doesn't have the added sugar, um, you'll be mm -hmm. just fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that recipe you posted online does show it with no, no tomato and it has just water instead. So yeah. yeah. That would take care of that. Yeah, there's definitely options. Another kind of tip I'll give is something that I've done in the past is just bought a can of tomato paste because it's literally straight, you know, tomatoes, and then just add water to um, to reduce it a little bit and then add seasoning. Okay. So that's another option too. Guess what, Lindsay? Is it done? The piece is ready to come let's out of the oven. Let's go. Let's see what it looks like. Can I wish I was it? there to try it. <laughs> okay. I wish you were too. All right, not half bad. Oh, that looks awesome, Mary. Oh, I just, I'm, I'm trying to smell it. I just want to like waft the smell into my face. It looks really good. I bet you want to try it. Yes. <laughs> so I let it cool for a little bit. My crust is nice and firm. It It's just a, a great base for this beautiful pizza with the whole milk mozzarella and all the fresh veggies and the uncured turkey pepperoni. And we're going to have a feast. A good thing it's lunchtime. Yes. Oh, it looks so good. And the nice thing, kind of like I mentioned at the beginning, is this pizza and the whole entire recipe is 100% mighty friendly. It's all natural ingredients, um, not a lot of processing in really any of the ingredients. Um, and so this is something, a good example of if you love pizza, it doesn't mean you have to give it up. Just try it in a different way. Recipe redo. Awesome. So I want to thank Mary a ton for taking her time out of her day to uh -huh. make this and her beautiful kitchen. So, um, thank and thanks you. everybody for bearing with me with my voice. So I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining. It's been great and I can't wait to have my lunch. <laughs>